welcome. Uh, today I wanted to do something a little different. Uh, we have this leather in that some of you may have seen as part of the heritage. Uh, so it is this rather unusual white leather um, and it's very thick, um, about three mil. Uh, it's called alum. It's uh, tanned using aluminium salts, alum salts, um, and it's very, very traditional. It used to be its origins traced back to Egyptian times. Um, and we have some of this left in our heritage range, which we are selling in A3 pieces. Now, one of the reasons I like it is just it's very different. Um, it has this uh, sort of uh, snuffed surface. It's called snuffed and I forget the term now. But anyway, it's kind of got this kind of buffed surface. So it's soft to the touch. Um, and it just occurred to me, I was wondering how it would colour and everything. And I've been wanting to experiment a little bit with doing sort of watercolour on things. And I found this little really quick tutorial, which I thought I'd give a try. And it came out so well, I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, so I've been doing these little baubles. So you can see here. And the surface of this just takes this the colours. I'm using the dyes, but uh, the water-based stains, sorry, thinned down. And it's just, they're just coming up really well. Uh, so there's some others that I've done. And I did also try it on the uh, white, because I know a lot of you have some of this white leather, the eco creamy white, the thinner uh, creamy white pieces. Um, this is just a sample that I just tried out, so I already had a bit of blue, so just ignore that bit. But uh, it came out quite well on that as well. Um, that's a lot flatter. You get a kind of flatter look to it, whereas this one you get a little bit more of that kind of sort of slightly missing kind of texture, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, so we'll put the camera down and do you a little go of how it all worked out. So the things that you will need to have handy a glass jar of water, a couple of paint brushes, I've got kind of a wide one and a smaller one, uh, a fine liner pen, or you could use a metallic pen for this or just the paint brushes, um, so not essential, um, just add kind of a little nice detailing in for the tops. Um, something round, so you want to kind of find something plastic that's round, it could be big, small, whatever, it just needs to have this circular kind of and sharpish edge. Uh, this is actually just one of those little containers that rubber gloves came in um, that I hung on to for some reason, <laughs> and it came in handy. Um, so if you're using it, just make sure if you use this bit it doesn't squeeze too much, otherwise you'll get an oval when you, if you squeeze it, whereas the lid is really bendy. Uh, so I'm going to go with this one for getting a nice perfect round circle. So for this we're going to use the alum, which has this texture on it. Um, it's a little tricky when you're just using a small piece to see which is the right side because they're both snuffed. So just have a little look and see whether there's one side that you want to use. And you, you want kind of the smoother uh, sort of nap side. So. Uh, you can probably see a little, I don't know if you can see actually very clearly on these small pieces, but some pieces it will be very obvious um, which you're going to do. Uh, so I've pulled in just neat, not diluted at all, a little bit of cranberry uh, identity water based stain. And I've actually put a tiny bit of red in and I'm just moving them around the pot a bit uh, just so that they get a little bit of coverage over the base of the pot and they're slightly mixed without over mixing so I should get a nice red and purple for this one let's move those out of the way so I'm going to press that into the center I'm just going to hold it down just to pick up some of the color like so and then I'm just going to position it hold it down just hold it for a moment or two allow the dye to color pigment to go in okay that was quite a fine one so I'm going to go again there we go, got a bit more definition. And I think we'll have one up here. And one sort of hanging down a bit there. But up to you, you can play around with how you do them, whether you do long, narrow ones, whether you do them for coasters, on a square. 
entirely up to you. I am now going to get my water and I'm going to paint the water onto the inside of these baubles. Just going up to those edges. With these wide brushes you can sometimes pick out and pull in some of the dye from the edge as you're working. I always like to make it quite heavy with water on the right hand side and then leave it a little bit dry and light on the left. Uh, it kind of gives you a sense of the 3D sphere and the play of light. So paint in and you want to, you, you kind of can keep going, you want to get it to change colour like that one's doing, to darken. So this one, the colour's pulling out to the outside, so I'm just going to pull it back in. There. And let's get some on this one as well. Now once you've got these dyes and the water on, you can then pick up some of the dye. So again, I'm going to wet the brush because I literally just want the tiniest amount on the end of the brush. I've just literally dabbed it in and I'm going to start to pull it into that top water. So you can see there it's very, very pale. So where you want it to be darker, which is just where I want it, where the overlap is there. So this one is the forerunner. And then I'm going to pull out that colour and just pull it round into that wet area. I'm going to do a little bit more on the next one. So again, just take a bit of red that time from the edge. So I've got a little bit more, very subtle but distinctly different colour. Now if you get a little bit there that goes in a little heavier than you meant it to, just go back with the water and pull out that colour down. So it's quite a quick activity this part and I think I'm going to take a little bit of the purple into that edge there. There we go with that one, I'm happy with that. And this last one. You'll see as soon as you touch the brush down with the colour it starts to bleed which is exactly what we want. It's the opposite of what we want to have happen in usual situations where we try and avoid this kind of bleed. And then I just like to just finish the brush off with a couple of dry bits just for texture. So from here I'm going to go to adding some gold highlights in it and for this I'm going to use the uh, Dora uh, metallic hybrid metallic and the reason for that is it when you kind of put it on really thin you just end up with those little mica crystals of glitter which just give you this really lovely kind of sparkle it's very very sparkly paint which is exactly what we need for this so I'm going to work on it while it's still a little wet that to one side that lid And for this, I'm going to carry on using the wide brush actually, so I'm just going to wash it off a little. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of this gold paint from the top here, pop it down on the board so that I can kind of thin it right down. And then I can go and layer up some bits into it. So you can put as much or as little as you want, and again you can go back into the water and pull it round which will just really thin and give you just that glitter surface when it dries back. So I guess the lesson of this kind of watercolour is lots and lots of water and less is more. You don't need very much colour, you don't need very much going on. And if you get an accidental bit of glitter like that, just work with it. That's coming out really nicely. And if there are any bits there where you've gone over with the gold it's quite opaque and you want to bring back the 
darker colour you can still work because it's still wet you can still go back in and tint it tint it down there like so just before we stop I've got this gold this brush here with this length I'm going to pick up a little bit of the gold paint again and I'm just going to take the paintbrush sideways on and pull up some lines, some hanging strings, make them a little bit more gold. Like so, and then we'll let that dry off. You can speed up the drying with a hairdryer or, or a hot air gun, just don't go too mad because you don't want to uh, make the um, leather curl. So I'm going to pop that down. Now this one is dry, this is one I did earlier. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my fine liner pen here now and I'm going to put in the little things that you get on the tops of your baubles. So it's literally just two sides sloping in and a couple of discs in like so. And I think this is just quite a nice detail to just add that final kind of sense of context. If you want you can go over that paint, just put another line into that gold just for definition and you can also put a little bow on it if you fancied. 